Welcome back, everybody. We are here. Another incredible episode of the One Great Work Warriors. We got another very important topic that we want to discuss with you guys. We're going to bring up some great points, and this is a great topic. It's an important topic, I think, and that is the dangers of compromise. And I think it's a really important topic to cover, and it's one I have actually put a lot of thought into. And it seems simple when you first think about the word compromise. Is there a danger when you compromise? And what is that danger if there is a danger? So we're all here together. You guys know everybody here by now. And I'm just going to pass it off to you, Chris, so we can dive into this, the dangers of compromise. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for introducing things. And listeners, thanks for joining us today. Um, compromise is a tricky subject. It's something that, you know, we, we all have to deal with because we're living in a situation where um, authoritarians are ruling um, the belief system of most human beings. And if people are in the state of being ruled and willing to do that in mass, it puts the other people who, who don't want to be ruled in the position of trying to extract, extract themselves from a very um, difficult rock and a hard place position. So from my understanding of the word compromise is that it's so uh, basically two words put together co which is like in cooperation which is with and promise basically you know so when we make a promise with someone else there's a certain aspect of our own expectations or hopes of how things are going to turn out that is um not exactly what we would want it to be it's not the perfect scenario so when we make a compromise, we're forced to give up something, sacrifice something. And um, I was recently thinking about this, like, um, you know, two roads, for instance. The direction I'm going is going down one road. The direction um, Rick is going down is, is another road. At a certain point, those two roads cross. And even though we're heading in two different directions, if Rick and I were to meet at the intersection, of the of our two roads the directions we're going on that would be the compromise between where he thinks we should go and where i think we should go we could kind of imagine the same thing with two flashlights you know me and derek are in the forest in the dark i'm shining my direction the way i intend to go derek shining his flashlight the way he intends to go and um, we find the intersection of the two lights and that's the compromise between where he thinks we should go and where i think we should go and we don't have to compromise, but um, in a lot of cases, when we want to work together with other people or when we're forced to, by virtue of living in a society and being in a world where there's all these other human beings that get to make decisions around us, it puts in a situation where we can't always get exactly what we want, exactly when we want it, and we have to compromise in order to get things done. But that can be a slippery slope. Um, I think the main difference from um, the way I've thought about it is external compromises that we make with other people or situations versus internal compromises that we make um, where, you know, if you can imagine my two parts of myself, my mind and my body, like those two roads or those two flashlights, they have two different ideas of what we're doing right now. And my mind has this idea that we're going to be really healthy. And my body has this idea that we can eat 100 Twinkies. There's going to be a, a point at which those two different realities intersect and there's going to be a problem, you know, in the bathroom or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the point is that when it comes to internal compromise, there's a very dangerous um, thing when we don't agree with our own self. And I think that's where we really need to watch um, straying away from our principles and our morals in the internal world in the internal landscape when it comes to compromise and when it comes to compromise in the external world there's also a slippery slope where we can go too far but i would also argue that without some level of giving things up and seeing things other people's way or being willing to meet in the middle then there's no way to have relationships there's no way to have teamwork and there's no way to get things done on a large scale because you'd be completely on your own and um, be resistant to all around you if you weren't willing to compromise. So um, those are the quick, you know, brainstorm top of my head type of comments I have on the word compromise and the dangers of compromise. Um, and I would like to pass it to my man, Jim. 
he gave a little surprise face. <laughs> I didn't I didn't want that to happen. No worries. So um all right. So yeah, um when Brandon brought this topic of compromise up the other week, uh it kind of threw me off because I didn't really ever think about it as like such a big deal. I haven't heard people speak about it too much. And I was like, well, I don't I don't haven't really thought about it. So it's been cool kind of just getting my head around it and like so i'm here to learn to hear what you guys have to say a lot and um thinking about it is is learning but um from what i'm getting from it is um compromise is um you're making a promise jointly with someone um and it's a promise that you're making with someone that you're gonna most likely resent or it's um i heard a good quote about it um your um compromising is the enemy of agreement or it's like you're agreeing with someone to to do something you don't really agree with that's like a lot of uh that may be happening in relationships and that um you know those compromises i mean and then when it relates to like the society you know when i'm going to work in the morning I, i've always been one I, I look at people like when i'm driving like if i'm at a stoplight and people are like going around me and from my um you know overall take is people don't look so happy to me like they all seem like they're compromising and resenting like where they're going you know like they have to you know go someplace, get up in the morning, go someplace they don't want to go, you know? other It's all attitude. You could be grateful and, and all that too, but I think ultimately it's a compromise. Um, uh, what else I got? Um, you know, just uh, like all these things, like with the, like you don't even realize, like since, you know, it's part of the programming. Like say you want to go, you want to drive then it's like oh i gotta get a license i don't want to get a license but but then you're like all right i guess i gotta agree with them uh, uh, and they get what they want i get i get what i want so i can drive you know and if i don't do drive the way they want me to then so it's all about about like you know being controlled and you know that that lack of freedom is being compromised like that's basically it it's, it's you know, if we're talking about freedom, like we're really giving that away. Um, and so, and resenting it with, but at the same time, like we've spoken about in past videos, most people are in denial of that, but you know, so far that's what, what I got. Um, I see the same thing going with money in the direction of, uh, the cashless society. A lot of pe people are c compromising on that, you know, like ca cash is going to disappear. Um, you know, that's just something people could think about. But yeah, I'll pass it to back to Rick. Perfect. I'm I was glad you did, Jim, because I was like, I want to build on what he's saying, because as soon as you said that you at first when this topic was brought forward, it was kind of like, OK, I. I was like, kind of like you, I was like, okay, I've never really thought of this word and which is really weird because how often do you think of that word compromise, even though it's something that all of us do to some degree every day, I, everybody's compromising in, in little ways every day. It's just how you're compromising and what you're compromising, I think, are the true, that's the question to me. And I think that's what, during this process of thinking about this word so much in the last, since our last uh, show is that you know there I, I came to the conclusion there is certain things you can compromise on and there's certain things you can't and so when i, I think of it in like relationships and with friendships and that you know certain a certain degree you're doing little compromises but they're not major compromises there's just little compromises that you do to make things grow small smoother and i mean i you can do it a simple example of like if you're in a relationship with somebody you know you know your partner wants to see a certain movie and you want to see a different movie so you do a little compromise we'll see your movie this week next week we'll see my movie happy 
everybody's good there's a little compromise so that then you think of the compromise where there's things you can't compromise on and that is what is so important to me and when i mean things you can't compromise on what can you compromise on compromise on well definitely integrity is something i don't think anyone should be compromising on um principles is a definitely one that people shouldn't be compromising on and do truth is a major one that people are compromising on and then i it all leads to, uh, to what i kept thinking about is when you start doing these compromises and especially you know the, especially when you start compromising and then that starts infringing on other people's rights and you start taking things from other people because of your compromise so yeah. i think of it that way um how's my audio uh coming in now good is it coming in? okay yeah um when i originally picked this topic i was talking more of the etym of etymological sense of the verb i wasn't talking more of the you know like the contractual you know like two people making a, a, a joint hell agreement i was talking more of the exposure to risk and danger are to expose the reputation of because when we ask ourselves what is an individual what is a a human being that is not divided so when we look at you know like the physical body as being not divided it's made up of the skin the organs you know the heart you know hell the uh the uh, bone structure the central nervous system peripheral nervous system uh you know how the brain how the mind all that works in an integral you know hell, cohesiveness there is a harmony hell about that so you can kind of say it's integrated so that's what the word integrity means to operate you know from wholeness to be hell wholeness but when you compromise you expose yourself you, you you give a piece of yourself you sacrifice a piece of yourself rather it's principles rather it's your integrity rather it's your word or rather it's your spiritual side so that's where i, I was coming from is the dangers of sacrificing our principles the dangers of sacrificing the truth the dangers of sacrificing our integrity because when we compromise it's a form of self-violation because to not have integrity is to not walk that path to truth to not have you know uh honor to not be whole to not use your voice and you see we compromise out of fear out of trauma and of course we compromise to the group to fit in but when you look at the word to fit in, it's just another word to mold, you know? So to fit into something, you can mold it to put it there almost like a, a puzzle piece. So why do we compromise our principles? Why do we compromise our integrity? We saw it the past three years, you know, people just compromise because people want to be a part of the group. You know, people want to feel a way of comfort or safety or going along to get along. So another way we compromise by not honoring our word, because like I've said many times before, you know, the, one of the closest ways you can get to the divine is by honoring and maintaining your word, because then your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions are aligned. You know, you are integrated. You are operating as a harmonious, holistic being at some degree when you keep and honor your word. And that's the reason why the word was so important. And why we as human beings are the only beings that we know that are capable of speech, because the word is an attribute of the divine, of the divinity of God, a means to communicate. So when we compromise our voice, because there's another thing that can be compromised, people are compromising their voice by not speaking the truth, by not letting their bodies be a vessel for the truth to come through then we are compromising. We are compromising. So I wanted to kind of like lay that framework because I think it's important for us to understand that when we do compromise, we do lose a piece of ourselves and we have to work harder and harder to get that piece back. And, you know, like people will say, you know, we're all beings of God. We're all beings of divine. Okay, well, is that, um, you know, is that source, is that, he'll integrate it or is that you know 
in a schism. Of course, it's integrated. So it's inter so it's integral. So should we not also be like that? Because the all, the universe, it operates on unity. That's what the word pretty much means. The universe, one big change. So we see that the solar system, it all has this harmonious pattern. It all operates on unity. Our, um, the inside structures of our body, it operates on you know, unity. But yet we as human beings seem to have a form of disunity because we continuously compromise. We continuously compromise. So you know, I'm going to pass it on to Derek before I go into more detail. Thank you for all that, Brandon. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I've compromised a little bit of sleep to be here. I'm mm. sorry if my voice is a little raspy. Maybe my immune system is a little compromised. But uh, hey, c'est la vie, les amis. That's life, my friends, if you need a translation. And uh, yeah, 13 years of my life I've been in France, all because of the initial love and. Uh, just having her trying to please the love of my life and live in a different place and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, there's a compromise to that. There's a shift of, of everything. And um, not to delve into that, but uh, yeah, what a lot of you fellas were talking about reminded me that um, – just like any kind of contract we're going to sign for any kind of work, usually, we're making an agreement on something, yet, as Jim, you've seen so many long faces in traffic or whatever, that seems drastic. A lot of people's spiritual currency is being compromised, being their time, energy, and focus. And you can just tell by their body language that they would rather be elsewhere. And uh, for the past couple of years, I've been trying to figure out and formulate a better way to just get out of the matrix of this shit, but still be able to have a monetary inflow where I don't have to worry about, you know, getting a nine to five or whatever the hell. So uh, I see that as like a, a huge integral part of, you know, life and people's choices and compromises and stuff and trying to think about a just even if people are stuck in whatever kind of job there's still ways to flip the script on their situation even if they're still like stuck in there like how are people operating within their work environment you could apply the hermetic principles anywhere so it's not to be disempowered just because, oh, I compromise my soul just because I work at a fucking factory or some shit like that. Can you not carry your light into that kind of just work environment? Be any kind of example of a just a good hard worker uh, with a good personality and all that stuff. And, and yeah, it does suck that, you know, these jobs, they tend to wear you down and, you know, beat at least uh, eight hours of energy and time out of us day in, day out. But uh, yeah, just things to consider, you know. Uh, but yeah, like uh, just when we bring up these topics, I love the fact that we go into, you know, the definitions and etymology of things and all that. And uh, loving lyrics and, and all that good stuff. Um, kind of look at the phonetics and similar words and things like that and see how they correlate or sound kind of similar so yeah even in french like compromise is the same word compromis compromis and the same word promise is in the word uh, promis they're just like uh, spelled a little bit differently or pronounced a little bit differently and the word compris in past tense like do you understand it's understood is like so much similar but uh in english you know compromise could lead to complacency possibly it's consent to a degree uh or compliance or conformity 
when we comply, we can be complicit or compliant due to some coercion, possibly, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, that's all I'm going to say on this initial bit. Jerry, how you doing, brother? <laughs> Good, man. I uh, kind of winged this, but I'm going to do my best. So I got this book right here. It's called On Compromise by Ron Renard. Highly recommend it. Like, my mind went when I was reading it this today. So I'm going to be reading from this book, and uh, that'll be my part. All right, let's begin. XXV double I. Let's start. All right. Living uncompromised is not about being perfect. It is, though, about being engaged in the work of discovering and living increasingly through who you truly are at your best. The most fulfilled and effective people know what they stand for. They know why and they live accordingly. And when they fall, they recover back to themselves post haste. Living uncompromised is about recognizing that moment by moment, you're making decisions that either establish you as a consistent man or woman of your word, or as a poser who looks good but isn't living what you profess. The unfortunate truth is we all compromise. We naturally look for the easiest way to meet our needs and wants, which is itself not a problem. This inherent trait helps us survive and on a more daily basis be more efficient. The problem arises when as adults who know what's right, wrong, or useful, not so useful in terms of living according to our best selves, we don't follow through and do what we know. We do things that let us avoid responsibility and ultimately defer living our truest, most authentic, uncompromised life to an unspecified time in the hopeful remote future. More often than not, we compromise because it's easy to rest or take a break from high standards. We cut ourselves a little extra slack in terms of following through with the things we know we need to do, want to do, or said we to do. It seems like no big deal until these seemingly benign compromises turn into a habit. As this happens, we go from intolerance to acceptance to embracing, embracing and even defending the compromise. Believing our limitations stemming from laziness or weakness are who we are. The result is a society full of people who are searching for meaning while they deny their responsibility or capacity to create their lives on their terms. And it's on the slippery, slippery slope where lives are lost or reclaimed. Those who choose to live uncompromised, however, are steadily climbing toward their summit. Of course, they'll rest and enjoy themselves and get roughed up, but they'll also consistently learn and grow. They're engaged in choosing and living their best lives on their terms. The compromised, on the other hand, become land developers on the mountain slope. They don't really believe that reaching their ideal summit is possible, so they set up camp, exhausting themselves with demoralizing, habitual investments in the same issues, problems, and lessons, not to mention the same consequences and justifications. I will pass it back to Crypt. Boom. That was great though, Jerry. Thank you for sharing. That was that was amazing. And I actually have that, Jerry, in my notes. That is compromise. Uh, is it a bad habit? Can it become a bad habit? So that's really cool that you read that. That was amazing. And I was just like, wow, I actually had that in my notes. <laughs> that if you start compromising even a little bit, does it become a bad habit? And so that's amazing. And it was really, really cool that you read that. So thank you. And yeah, I know I agree with all of what you guys are saying. And it's cool that we're all kind of touching on justifying your compromises. I think a lot of people do that, right? They they'll they defend them, they con they and they justify them. And you know, a lot of people compromise. And I just have examples of they, you know, to go along to get along, uh, to go with the flow of what other people are doing. You don't want to make waves, which is you know what a lot of people do. And I think a lot of things are contributing to that. I think social media is a big one where people are really plugged into social media and that is steering a lot of it and affecting what they're willing to compromise. And I think people should be really careful of that because when you start getting into groupthink and then you, and I know a big one, a few big ones in the last few years for me 
which tactics were used on me to try to get me to compromise was definitely guilt and fear were two big ones. People that like people for various reasons were using these tactics on me. It was definitely guilt and fear. And they were trying to get me to compromise, which I wouldn't do. I did not. And I'm so proud to say that I did not compromise when it came to what, you know, I don't want to say it on here because I don't know if they'll flag it, but I think people know what I mean that I never went and got. <laughs> so, I mean, and I felt it, I felt the heat from that and I didn't, I wouldn't compromise though. So I just think that people have to be very careful of what's steering their decisions and what they're compromising on. And, uh, cause I think once you start compromising, it can lead to a lot of things that we're seeing bad things. And that's a loss of freedom. It's a loss of rights. And then what happens when you start losing all of that, then you're starting to sacrifice truth. And I think that's where we don't want to be. And it's what's happening. So that's, that's why I wanted to add to that. So what do you think, Chris, you want to. Sure. Um, yeah. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. Um, what I was thinking about sharing is. You know, um, what Brandon was talking about, I started off in the most general sense, but um, let's look at the definitions here. Um, the um, def definition of compromise, you know, the first definition is to settle a dispute by mutual concession. That's kind of what I was talking about with, you know, roads crossing or the flashlights, you know, like finding happy ground between people. That's mostly a positive connotation. But what we're really focusing in here more in this discussion is uh, definition number two, which is accepting standards that are lower than desirable. And um, what occurred to me about the word compromise, being a construction guy, is it's also a term that means like when something's about to break. You know, they say um, in sci-fi movies, you know, the whole has been compromised, you know, when the ship takes too many shots or, you know, um, if you build something and water's getting through, you might say, oh, it's been compromised, you know, and it the kind of has been like, compromised. <laughs> right. The fields have been compromised, right? It reminds me of a horse, you know, like when a horse is broken, you know, that's kind of to me the parallel for us as humans. When we're living our life out in public and we're broken like a horse, we've been compromised. That means that we've taken the punch, you know, we've followed the orders, we've submitted, right? And the more times, like you're saying with a really good point, you become in a habit of submitting because, you know, you have to on certain things. Like I'm not to the level right now of fighting the DMV. Like I decided to go forward with keeping my papers in order to an extent, even though I don't think I should have to um, by rights and by um, natural law. But you know, you're weighing consequences. So certain compromises I'm going to make in, in this lifetime or for the next few years so that I can do other things I care about more. But it is a slippery slope. The more times we compromise on um, our standards of what we know to be right, then the more times that it um, diminishes or erodes who we are as a person in the world because we aren't true to what we say we are. And what, what we think we are inside, we know better than anyone else does. And if we sense any kind of um, difference within ourselves, then um, it becomes an issue. There's an echo in our own mind, you know, and when one echo doesn't match the other, it's like it becomes a problem. And, and I think that's where people develop a lot of um, emotional issues, mental issues, and even manifest in the physical form because somewhere inside of the self, there's a disagreement. And that's because a person has a belief system in their mind, and yet they're not really following that belief system. And so I would recommend not, not to get trapped in a belief system and to recognize the difference between beliefs and truths. And that's why we're always pushing people to look at things like the hermetic traditions and the hermetic principles, things that um, are true with or without you. Um, whatever conditions of your life are um, based on natural law principles. And so the closer we can get to those principles being what carry us in our decision-making process, rather than a belief system, the more we can be rooted in truth and be in alignment with that. And so um, I guess what I'm talking about is the dissonance that's created within oneself when too much compromise happens because we no longer are in alignment with what we think and say we are. So I'll pass it to Brandon. Right. Um, 
Compromise is the path of least resistance. Compromise is the pathway to least resistance because most people don't want to rock the boat. Most people don't want to offend others. You know, most people want to just ride the tide. And that's what we do and when we compromise. It's a it's a form of laying down. You know, it's a cowardly thing to do. And I'm talking about from its verb, not from its noun connotation. That's why we, you know, we went into the, the definition. I'm talking from the verb. And yes, Chris, um, you know, when they say something has been compromised, that's a term that they use in war. You know, this area has been compromised because it has been exposed to risk. It has been exposed to danger. So, you know, this pathway of least resistance, this cowardly, you know, pathway, we picked this pathway, unfortunately, because we don't know ourselves. You know, that's one of the other uh, reasons that I came up with, you know, along with trauma, fear, wanting to fit in, that most people don't know themselves. They don't know their principles. They don't know their boundaries. They don't know, you know, what pisses them off. They don't know what excites them. They don't know anything about their own psyche. So that's why you know, they compromise because someone who does not know themselves will always compromise because they don't have any standards or principles to even weigh any you know, action on. You know, we talk about, you know, how the scales of my yacht and weighing things, you know, so if you have a standard, if you have principles, then you have something to weigh and measure it on. Well, if someone does not know themselves, they obviously can't have principles. So how are they going to, um, you know, be able to function, you know, when a certain ordeal comes? Of course, they're going to compromise because they don't have anything to weigh it with to figure out to, you know, to use logic, to, to, you know, to use critical thinking skills. So, you know, that's why a lot of people compromise. And of course, you know, this all has to do with shadow work because, you know, one who knows themselves, one who's in control, held themselves, one who is integrated will never, ever tell compromise, you know, have that penalty, have principles, will never, ever compromise, held that boundaries, will never, ever compromise the truth not for any reason, not for the sake of the group, not for the greater good, you know, because that's how they get people to compromise. And another way to get us to compromise is by falling into our emotional uh, help, help attachments, you know, by making things, uh, you know, uh, cute or, you know, they, you know, like just getting people to fall in that emotional subconscious, you know, programming that way. It kind of, you know, how bypasses our conscious realization and say, hey, you know, like, what's the reason why I am, you know, like feeling this way or, you know, like, what's the real goal here? You know, so shadow work is important, you know, you know, we've talked about it so many times. Um, so that's one of the defenses against help compromise is knowing who you are, knowing how what you stand for, knowing what your purpose is, knowing what you're here to do and knowing that you are a beacon for the truth, you know? And unfortunately, not enough people do that. And that's why we keep seeing them conform. You know, we keep seeing them um, lose focus, you know, worrying about, you know, what's going on in certain parts of the world or, you know, worried about what was going on in Hawaii a couple of months ago, you know, because they don't really know themselves and it's easy for them to be led astray with whatever mainstream narrative they're telling you to focus on. But if you truly know what's going on, you know, it's like, hey, man, like those are just you know, distractions. And because I know myself, then there's no force outside of me that's going to control my consciousness. Then, then therefore, I'm not going to compromise what I'm here to do, which is spread the message of truth. You know, because that's what everyone hell is doing is they are compromising that by falling for the lie, by falling for the illusion. You know, by falling for the mainstream narrative, we are compromising the truth, unfortunately, by not speaking up, by not saying no, by not putting our foot down, by not, you know, protecting our kids, by not doing what's right, by not maintaining the legacies of individuals who have come before us, who have laid these pathways, you know, for us to be able to educate ourselves. You know, we are compromising all of that. We are compromising 
of what it means to be a human being held with a soul by being soul dead creatures with no conscience. We are compromising some of the greatest potentials that were given to us by creation. And we wonder why we're not getting any aid. We wonder why we aren't getting any help when we are operating as a fractured, traumatized being, you know, what outside force is going to come help us if we are not united? What outside force? None. You know, it's like I've said how many times, if you go to any sports event, you see how people react, the energy. Once they help unite hundreds of thousands of people, you can measure the energy and, and you can feel it. You can feel that force. So you can so you can see that there's power in being held integrated, but to truly be integrated, it has to start from within. And that's what should not be compromised because at your heart and, and at your soul, you are supposed to be an integrated being, you know, the mind, the body, and the spiritual side is all supposed to be integrated and working in harmony. And that's what we are compromising. We are compromising our soul because this has a lot of spiritual um, um, effects. That's what people don't understand is, 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 you know, this has a lot of spiritual significance because we are compromising our spiritual side and just focusing on the flesh, focusing on the material. But we are losing sight of the spiritual and that's where we are in danger of because then, you know, we are seeing the consequences of of natural law being amplified and that's one of the biggest dangers of compromise is the amplification of ishfet you know the hell the um hell the ramifications of themis are going to be sped up rapidly so that's like the biggest danger is themis revealing herself in the form of cosmic justice or cosmic retribution. I'll pass it on to anyone who wants to go. Yeah. Yeah, that cause and effect and how we've been on the negative path for quite a long time because this earth realm has been compromised for eons way beyond antiquity. And it goes into the harmonics, even, even our own anatomy, you know, think of the law of correspondence as within, as without. Are we not a reflection of this earth that we're born upon and the universe that resides up in it? And uh, just, yeah, growing up in this world, you see how all these institutions are compromised to a degree. Oh, Chris, by the way, nice t-shirt, man. Hitchhiking on a guide to truth, you know? Word up to James. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Uh, Brandon, I wanted to touch upon a couple things because... This is the modus operandi of the dark forces, whatever, is to turn natural law on its head, you know, a la the inverted pentagram, which is the quintessential spirit man that's integrated the elements that we're all comprised of. And if we're compromised of that, then we're not fully operating at our full potential, unfortunately. Neither are, you know, a lot of other life forms and all that jazz and and yeah just like are the hospitals not compromised is education not compromised are is the military politics yeah like what institution is not compromised all these corporations that have like almost an iron fist over certain things and like you throw in like you know the mafioso element of, of things you know especially in, in the states and over here in france you know like they still kind of run shit behind the scenes, you know what I mean? And like, and they are co-opted with the government and whatever the fuck. And so it's just sucks. And there's been this uphill battle to kind of get that equal equilibrium to have the scales balanced of my on, on the more macrocosmic level. And yeah, it is like Sisyphus, you know, pushing that big ass boulder up and we all got to stand behind ourselves and that boulder to push it up together. But uh, yeah, like, uh brandon i like what you said real quick um regarding just how yeah it's the path of least resistance and that everyone's just riding the wave of this it's the this wave has been designed this way the life of convenience and all this stuff and 
and all this stuff. And yet we're paying through the ass and the nose about mm-hmm. a lot of shit, especially right now. Not even like inflation and all that stuff. Way before the dawning of the fucking Rona. But uh, yeah, there's that's one of the inversions of the hermetic laws regarding rhythm. And just like the tide of how things are pushed against our natural state of living. And these are just kind of called pendulums or even egregores and that kind of stuff. Just like, you know, a massive group energy. You know, think of the stadium and how like all these, you know, sports people say like, oh, the stadium is electrified because uh, something happened. And like, how many people actually let out that much, you know, exuberant energy for something that really fucking matters anyways? But yeah, you compromise a hundred bucks to go see your favorite sports team and all that. And that's cool. You know, that's people's free will and blah, blah, blah. But that's what I just wanted to respond to and add on to what you were saying, Brandon. Thank you, man. You know, one thing I'll pop in with is one indicator of how much people care about things is, you know, like, would you die? Would you die for what you care about? And look at how many people out there have jobs, careers that are so important to them that they don't have time for family or they don't have time to do, you know, extra work. Like we're talking about great work, trying to talk to others about what's right and truth and such a thing, or they don't have time to research things, but they do have time to go to their job and get their money. Or the average die for your job. What do you think they're going to say? They're going to say, no, I wouldn't die for my job. I just do it to get money. So they're doing it and sacrificing all these things for it or for money. That's kind of why I put money in the background of the thumbnail I made for this episode is because that's really where you see where it all breaks down, Um, whether it's a religion, a church, whatever it is, they might have, they say they're all for something and they really believe in something. And then as soon as the money problems start coming in, that's when all of a sudden it all breaks down and they're willing to start making all kinds of compromises. And so, um, you know, what would you die for? And when you can answer that question and that's actually aligning with what you're doing with your time, that you would, you would literally die to do what you're doing. You care about it that much. And it's that correct. And that on the right path, then you're not compromised. And then you're living a life like Ron Renald talked about of um, uncompromising and people that go for their goals and that, um, really like are willing to do whatever needs to be done to reach where they're trying to go. They do amazing things, but they also give up amazing things and they go through pain and trials that most of us aren't ready to go through. And what really holds people back is fear, fear of the unknown, fear of not having safety, fear of um, what might go wrong. So in the end, like being an uncompromising person has a lot to do with courage it has a lot to do with will and it has a lot to do with knowing deep down what is really right, you know, and where your rights really are. And so um, I think a very powerful way personally to work on becoming a more uncompromising person is self-defense. Um, that's something that I've found the more I've studied self-defense, the more I feel a little bit of an edge on walking into various situations with another level of confidence that, I'm not quite as afraid for my own safety as I might otherwise be if I hadn't trained for different situations. So, you know, that's one hint I would give to people, but knowing yourself is the other one, you know, and that's like really taking time to be alone with yourself and to face emotions, even if they're uncomfortable until you understand where they're coming from and why they're causing you to make the choices you're making. So I think those are two of the most powerful things that a person can do to work on not being So um, compromising to authority is work on your own physical strength, your own physical self-defense plan. And and then um, outside of that, being honest and true to your word. And that's, to me, those are some of the most powerful things a person can do. Um, So um, anybody else want to jump in, James? You want to go up next, Jim? Sure. I mean, thanks, guys. I'm, I'm getting a lot out of from everything you're saying um and i'm hearing a lot of the uh one second sorry um 
stuff about integrity and uh, cognitive dissonance again, like these themes. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when people think of compromising, it's like with another person and you're agreeing to do something that you don't really agree with. But uh, we're also talking about compromising ourselves. So you're agreeing to do something you don't agree with, like you're meeting yourself in the middle. And, um, you know, what are the consequences of that? If, if the whole society is agreeing to do things they don't agree with, you know, and that's that awareness, which is what we're doing, right? We're talking about this and how important it is like to point out to people, like we're doing this all day long. We're, we're compromising. We're agreeing with things that we don't agree with you know, just to get by or, or, or living in denial of that. Like, so, I mean, I, I love that we're talking about it and we're, we're bringing awareness to it. Um, you know, what's it going to take for, for people to take it on, you know, like, like we always talk about the shadow work and that's like, you know, think about what are the consequences of you, you're agreeing to do stuff that you don't agree with. It's really a big deal that, like, like I said earlier, like, you know, when Brandon brought up the word compromise, I didn't really ever think think of it so deeply, but most people don't. So, but how do you, you know, how do you get people to think about how, how they're compromising themselves all the time, you know? And I really loved um, Jerry, the what you were reading there that was that was powerful and and brandon you were going off too um but uh i mean yeah that that integrity and that uncompromised life i don't know if you have any more of that uh any more excerpts from that book jerry you could share with us cool yeah man i uh, got some as soon as you're finished Go ahead. All right. Go for it. Let's see. Let's read. Segundo. Uh, uh, let's just. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Slow. Um, okay, I found it. It's just literally the next. <clears throat> sex segment the uncompromised the uncompromised is a term used periodically throughout this book to identify those of us who regardless of our politics religion philosophy ideology or even place in history have been or are focused on living consistently the best that's within ourselves. And when we do fail to live the life we want for ourselves, when we compromise, we recognize it, learn from it, and recover back to our own path of living uncompromised and okay regardless of anyone's level of notoriety great lives are lived when we stand on what he calls the standards of the uncompromised they are enthusiasm courage endurance and integrity Nobody has ever done or ever will do anything of any worth without all four of them. As we start this intimate conversation about compromise and integrity, complacency, and living these standards, you'll see more clearly how your choices have and will make all the difference between a life of mediocrity, living less than one's own potential, and one of excellence. We all choose. It's just... It's just so good, man. <laughs> I got to get that book. And what's the name <laughs> held that book, uh, Jerry? It's called Uncompromised When You're Ready to Live Your Life on Your Terms.
Definitely gonna grab that tonight. Yeah. Ron Renaud. Yeah, I'll try to find it and um, put it. Renaud. They have links. Some Renaud. French, I think. But yeah. Renaud. <laughs> no. Renaud. Yeah. So um, it's great words and inspirational as well. I think each and every one of us and each and every listener could stand to um, step it up on on this. Um, obviously, our whole society needs to in a major way. But I think we can all take the challenge of um, kind of being less willing to compromise on things that, um, you know, kind of like things we don't really believe, really know are right, you know, and things that we really can stand against, we need to, wherever and wherever and whenever we are possible. That's kind of where I come with the end evil thing. You know, we try to end evil whenever and wherever possible. You know, and it seems like a big job. It seems like it's impossible. But the more people that are working on it, stamping out little fires, the better off we're going to be. So, you know, um, being be inspired, be encouraged. You want to um, kind of close things off tonight, Brandon? You got some more things to talk about? Yeah, I still have some uh, uh, things to talk about real quick. Um, you know, when you're younger, you hear these terms about, you know, being um, peer pressured. And it forces you into that uh, mind controlness of help compromising. And that's what we do a lot of the times is we do things that we really don't want to do. Um, you know, and we've all fell victim to this. Um, unfortunately, you know, in today's world, we see it a lot, I guess you can say, in the form of pleasure. You know, a lot of young adults, you know, uh, falling for the the a pleasure trap, you know, giving their body, um, sacrificing, giving a piece of the goods to someone who they really have no connection with, uh, you know, there is no love, there is no harmony. Then as they get older, they kind of misrepres um they kind of have a form of shame and guilt on that. Then they start to, you know, um it, it's like a form of hatred starts to build up you know, later on. And then um, as they grow, then they start to, you know, have more and, and more problems and that shame and guilt starts to, you know, unfortunately starts to build up. So being, you know, like I said, to kind of piggyback on what I said earlier, knowing yourself, you know, that's one of the key things, you know, it, is, is we have to know ourselves because, hell again, when we do things that we really don't want to do, our thoughts, our emotions and our actions are not in sync. And um, compromising the values, just, you know, hell, your self worth, and it devalues, you know, hell, your true value in and of itself because you are lowering your standards. You know, you are lowering your value by saying, "Hey, I'm just going to do what everyone else hell is doing. Hey, I'm just going to be average." That's pretty much what compromising is to say, "Hey, I'm just going to be average," rather than saying, "Hey, I'm going to be great." You know, so. Stop devaluing your self-worth because integrity, having integrity, having boundaries, having principles is a form of self-defense. It's a spiritual form of self-defense. You know, people just talk about self-defense in the physical form. Self-defense can come in the spiritual form, in the psychological form. You know, so we got to have those boundaries. We got to have those principles. And once you compromise those, just like with anything, once that barrier once that wall has been compromised then that's when the enemy comes in that's when the mind control comes in that's when the subversion um you know comes in that's when all these um cancerous ideologies come in and you open yourself up almost like a form of possession in another sense you know you open up yourself to forms of mind control you know then you start going along with the herd you start you know you start saying the chants you know, you start, you start dressing like everybody else. Then you're going to the rallies, you know, then you're engaging in the same violence that everyone is doing because in the group, you know, oh, who's going to take hell their responsibility hell in the group because it's easier to blend in, you know? So whenever you are in that group dynamic, you have to stay focused. You have to be hell aware, not just in the group dynamic, but pretty much in any dynamic, you know, these days, because there's always mind control out there to try to get you to compromise. 
but definitely in that group setting, in that group dynamic, you have to be extra, extra focused, you know, because it's easier to fit in and it's easier to lose sight of the self. And when I say, or when I talk about the self, I mean all aspects of the self, not just physical, not just spiritual, uh, spiritual, but all aspects of the self, you know, and the self can be great just as though, you know, how the self can be little, you know, it's, 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 it's not sacrificing that because I promise you, you're going to work 10 times harder trying to rebuild or trying to regain that. than if you just manage and do how the hard work and Chris brought up the term uh, earlier about being broken. Yeah. Unfortunately, most of us are broken because we aren't operating on that holistic uh, path, you know, just like you break a animal, you know, human beings can be broken too. And sadly, when we compromise, that's a form of us being broken because we are giving a piece of ourselves hell away. Then if something is not a part of you that once was, it's broken, you know, just like you break anything, it's broken, it's split in two. That's what trauma means. Trauma to be split, a heavy, a, a heavy scar, a heavy, deep wound. Well, to break the skin, that's trauma, you know? So whenever we are traumatized, we will stay broken. Whenever we stay broken, we will continue to compromise. And as long as we continue to compromise, we will never ever operate from a holistic, integrated, harmonious being. Damn. Damn, putting it down. Love it. Absolutely. Anybody else got any last conclusions before we finish up for tonight? I would just like I well I like to say, Chris. It just it's really it always seems that all the so many discussions I have it always comes back to doing the, it starts with the work on yourself. It, it, that's so key, and I think people have to really get that through their head and really start you know implementing it in their life is doing the work. You have to start with yourself. I, it's so important, and really ask yourself you know what you're compromising on with and be honest. Like what are you actually compromising when you really think about it. And I think we did a great job breaking down this word and really diving into it. I think everybody was incredible because it's a word, like I said, we do it every day, but how many people really put this much thought into what they're doing and what it actually is, a, the effects it's having? Because these little compromises that we all do, eventually they they add up. I think a lot of people justify it by, well, it's just a little compromise. Yeah, it's a little, but you know everybody's doing a little. It gets big quick. And then where we are, where we are. So that's my thought. Yeah, totally, Rick. And, I, you know, I was thinking about mentioning this. It, it's not that big of a analogy, but something so little like uh, for the convenience of things, you know, like, oh, you can take cash out of an ATM. That's more closer to your place. But they're going to charge like, you know, two to five bucks for you to take money out. Or you can pedal or walk your way, you know, <laughs> a mile further to, you know, to your local bank or whatever that that. You ain't going to charge an arm and a leg just to take your hard-earned money out that we shouldn't have to pay through the nose again <laughs> mm -hmm. just for, like, these little fucking inconveniences. And, yeah, is it compromising our wallets? Yes, to a good degree. And, yeah, these, like, little tick-for-tats that were just, you know, kind of like, ah, oh, it's for the convenience and this and that. Like, how much yeah. does that add up against, you know, our complacency or add towards exactly. our this complacency in a sense? But yeah, it's like this mentality in a sense that's just has people kind of just like all right they're going to compromise over this they're going to compromise over the next thing and like the social engineers watch they that know it yeah like they know it yeah so yep. folks got to be on their shit like like you said rick you know it all goes back to self and all goes back to that heart-based intelligence and feeling within that and judging your choices and decisions in your life even your thoughts in the first you know cosmic law principle mentalism and the inner mind's heart-based intelligence that derives thought not just from the brain stem. And yes, how is that weighed upon everything else in life? Going, Taking it back to my aunt. So yeah, don't walk around with that heavy heart. Stop compromising things that you don't need to, you know. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. How great points.
And um, before we close out, I want to give a, th a big thanks to the great Manly P. Hall, because he was the one who inspired this uh, health topic. And he was the one who actually said, you know, compromise is the path of least resistance. So I always like to honor, you know, hell, the great one. So I don't want anyone thinking that I came up with that because it wasn't me, you know, just giving honor to, you know, hell, the one who, who I heard it from. So, yeah, you know, a, a legend. So, but yeah. Yeah. So um, I would say compromise to make relationships work compromise with your friends to meet at the store but don't compromise your morals and don't compromise your principles and the more we can be uncompromising of those most important things the better and the quicker we'll see the world that we want to see so be inspired be motivated folks and um let's you know make that difference in the world and be that change so thanks for joining us and this is the one great work warriors we're out We'll see you next time, folks. Ultimately, it's up to you.